that uh, helping people solve problems, realize goals, improve quality of life as, as like a driver. I would I agree with you uh, 100%. Um, I, my, my prediction might, the packaging might be a little bit different, but I think, I think, I'm, I think we're saying the exact same thing. So I, I would say because of all of the, uh, let's say globalization and digitalization of, of the planet and customers being able to participate in, in different markets around the world already yeah. um, it i think it it forces something that if you're not creating value for for your customer uh you really only have one choice and that's to compete on price um whereas if you're creating value you have the opportunity for some uh price premium and some competitive advantage because you're creating value in a unique way and and i think the world is getting more and more into this what 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 is the value that's created for me, you know? So we talked about a health club earlier <laughs> before we were recording and the whole idea that, you know, I've, I've been going to the same health club for five years and they, they've never asked me why I go there. You know, if they, if they said, hey, why do you come here? Then they could actually offer me something and say, hey, if you really want to get rid of that 10 kilos, let's put you on a program and in three months, we'll get rid of that 10 kilos with you. And I would pay more for the result mm -hmm. than I pay for the, the instrument. So I think, uh, I think there's kind of three paths uh, here. Either those banks that are just incapable of seeing this value creation component uh, and, and, and that has to be customer centric, relationship centric, yeah. they're gonna be pushed down price wise and, and some of them will either bow out of it or the, the, some of them may be pushed into back office provider type positions where there's an intermediary between them and the, and the customer. Yeah. Or the other two would be becoming some niche provider and saying, okay, let's forget about being a universal bank with all products. Let's just be the best at, at helping people to buy a car, or let's be the best at helping people to buy a home, or let's be the best at day-to-day -day banking. And I think fintechs are going to push a lot of that because fintechs don't have this universal component. So a bank that buys a fintech that's good at a particular thing may decide to move into like this nicheism type type thing. And then I think the ones that are universal and really get this customer centric, relationship centric thing have to move into this, this, just the expanded nature of life events. And eventually they move into this concept of ecosystems and themed ecosystems, like everything you need around family, everything you need around health. And they'll just integrate their products into a much more lifestyle or life event yeah life stage oriented e ecosystem in the digital world with maybe the physical world support to it. So I, I kind of view those three major uh, areas for, for development. Unfortunately, I think a lot of banks are going to end up in that first one of being <laughs> just being pushed down by price and end up I ending up being that's, actually, that's, that's quite relevant, I think, today because, because of COVID and the impact on distribution, for example, there's a big challenge now for managing cost much more tightly in the banking sector. You've got revenues which are really under pressure, interest rates low all over the place. So margins reducing, you've got to do something about cost. The regulatory costs never go down, they always go up. So some big focus now on how do you manage a business which is being squeezed in so many ways. And that will start to perhaps shape the direction of travel for a number of the banking providers, organizations that decide to keep some aspects of their activity because they want to do much more relationship building. And others are much more driven for, let's get the share price up because we can deliver significant cost reductions. And, and that the impact of less people working in, in banks because the technology overtakes it digital starts to be driven harder and harder um and i think you know the, the covid one is, is is an element of starting to see the that differentiation that sort of banks starting to travel in slightly different directions and and who knows where that where that'll lead where the, the end of the day though will be there won't be as many no definitely less banks in the future but some of the ones that remain and it is sometimes the smaller ones that somehow are more in tune with their, their customers, their community. They give something back to that environment and the customers respond to it. Yeah. 
Perfect. Well, John, th this has been a good uh, talk, and I think we should do this more often for sure. <laughs> but uh, I want to say thanks. I think everybody's going to really enjoy this talk. We'll break it into modules and get them out every couple of days. Um, and I uh, just want to say thanks. It's fine. Pleasure. Awesome. All right. Okay. Good stuff. All right.